big advantages of object-based lettering over stitch file letters is that you have more creative options. I'm Linda Goodall, and in this video we'll take a look at turning lettering in Hatch into quilting outlines. I've used the invitation font that comes with Hatch to create these backstitch letters for this 12-inch finished calendar block that was pieced and embroidered in one hooping. I've also used Inktense colored pencils to tint the design. Here you can see what the design actually looks like. This design takes advantage of both the red work and branching tools in Hatch version 2. In this design window, you can see what the invitation font actually looks like. As you can see, it's composed of satin columns with an open interior. If we look on the lettering docker, we can see that it's just under 25 millimeters tall, which is about an inch. Now one of the reasons I chose this font is that instead of lowercase letters, it uses what's known as small caps. This means I won't have any descenders or ascenders that will affect the line. I pretty much have a stationary line, a rectangle going around here. Yes, I do have one capital letter, but after that all the rest of the letters are the same height and they all sit on one baseline. That means if I make one of these blocks for every month, I won't have to have some months that sit higher on the, the border pieces than other months. So let's see how to do it. Here I have that word again, and I'm going to clone it by right clicking and dragging. So the first step is to break it apart, and we can do that in the Edit Objects Toolbox. The first step is to break it apart into letters. You can see that now each is an individual letter. I'll need to break it apart one more time to break it down into its component parts. And now you can see that we just have normal digitizing objects. So we have satin columns and we have these run stitches and these are probably travel stitches. I want to get rid of all the travel stitches. So I can just hold down my control key and click through here and hit delete. And now let's scroll back up, make sure we got them all. And now I want to select all of these letters and turn them into back stitches. Right now we're looking at this in True View and it looks good, but let's take True View off and see what's really going on. I'll press T on the keyboard and I want you to notice up here, this little triangle is our exit point and it indicates we have a trim. This little circle indicates a start point, and these dotted lines are connectors. Notice what we have going on down here. We have lots of little triangles, lots of little circles. We have a lot of pieces that aren't really connected to each other except by jumps and trims, which is not a good idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each letter, and I'm going to go to Branching in the Edit Objects toolbox. It's also in the Digitize toolbox. Click that tool. I'll give it a start point, an exit point, press enter. That's all I need to do, and I'll need to do that for each letter. Now as I hover over branching, notice that it has a shortcut key of I. So if I just press I on the keyboard, I can give it an entry point and an exit point and hit enter, and there we go. So I'm going to select the next letter, drag a selection around the entire letter, making sure you don't take part of the next letter, press I, and this time I'm just going to press enter twice. When I press enter twice, then Hatch will figure out where to start and exit from. I, enter, enter, I, enter, enter, I, enter, enter, and I, enter, enter. I don't know if you noticed, but Hatch changed this from from being coming out down there to coming out up here because that's the shortest distance between those two letters. This is because I have Hatch set up to do the closest joins. So we still have trims because these are pretty tall letters. There's a pretty good sized gap between them. And if I want to leave them trimmed on, I can. If I don't want to trim between them, I can change some settings over here on this panel. We'll leave them the way they are. And I think I'll group them together, control G. And now if I select one, you can see that I'm selecting the whole word. Now, 
To hatch, this is no longer text. These are just typical digitized objects that look like letters when they're done. So if I misspelled this, if I spelled October with an A here or some other letter and went through all of this, I would need to replace this letter. I wouldn't have to retype the whole word. I could just retype this word up here and then use that, that letter as a replacement and move it into the sequence. So this is why I like to keep this word around until I'm done. When I'm done, I can just delete this and save out my file. Now another way to turn satin letters into outlines is with the Create Outlines tool. That wouldn't have worked so well with this type of lettering, and we'll look at using the Create Outlines tool in another video. So thanks for watching, please subscribe, and please make a comment if you like this video and want something else. Thanks!